Hello, beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. It is time to do my TBR for June 2023. All right, now before we get into the June TBR, the May wrap up, the gameplay, all of that good stuff, I do want to do a little bit of a life update. And this is ultimately also going to be a channel update because this life update will affect my channel. So I have actually recently accepted a part time contract position with our local Humane Society here. It's an opportunity that I had to jump on because I want to start getting my feet into the door with regard to animal services. Since any of you who have been with my channel for a while and you can tell by the name, animals are not just a huge passion of mine. Ensuring their welfare and care is basically what I have decided to dedicate my life to. I have mentioned this before, but I will be starting a master's program hopefully in fall that's completely devoted to animal science and behavior. And my ultimate goal is to eventually work in animal care full time as my career. And because of that, I really wanted the opportunity to start getting professional experience with animal welfare care, rescue services, and all of that stuff. And since I know that our local Humane Society is consistently overpopulated and understaffed, it is an organization that I completely and fully believe in and I wanted to lend my services to if I could. When I saw that they were accepting part-time contract positions, I went ahead and jumped at the chance and I was actually there today signing all the paperwork and securing my spot there on the weekends. So I will be working there Saturdays and Sundays. And y'all know that weekends are big catch-up days for me. Those are the days when I do the things that I can't do during the middle of the week, like all of the chores that get neglected, laundry, errands, certainly, and it is definitely the time when I film. So my filming and editing abilities will be greatly impacted by working over the weekend. So I think for the time being, until I can figure things out, until I can get into routine and see how actually busy and stressed and everything that I'm going to be, I'm only going to be able to commit to one video a week. Now, I really don't want to have to do that. I really want to be able to maintain two videos a week because that's what I've been able to do since starting back up my channel. And I definitely have more than just like four or five videos that I have ideas for that I want going up every single month. But at this point, I just don't know if I'm going to be able to do more because I still have to figure out when I'm going to be able to film and certainly when I'm going to be able to edit. So for right now, I cannot commit to more than one video a week. So I apologize. I hope that you understand and I hope that you will stick around with me. I don't want anything to happen to this channel. Books, reading, the online bookish community, this channel is very important to me and I don't want to end up taking a long gap like I did in 2021 where I took a year and a half off and I didn't film absolutely anything. That is not what I want to happen because I feel like I'm finally in a good rhythm. I'm finally able to connect with a lot of you more. So that's what I want to continue. And I'm going to do my best to bring y'all regular content on a regular day at least once a week. So that is the life update. That is the channel update. I hope that you all will stick with me. It's all just going to be crazy and chaotic for a little while, but I'm going to do my best. I'm going to do what I can. But for now, it's time to stop rambling and it's time to go ahead and get into June's TBR. All right, so you know the drill. Before I get into June's TBR, I have to go ahead and recap how I did in May, starting with the challenges that I pulled. So one of the challenges that I pulled was to read Chasing River by K.A. Tucker. This is the third book in her Bearing Water Quartet series, and I did end up reading that in May. Another challenge that I pulled was to read Every Last Fear by Alex Finley. I did successfully complete that as well. And then the final challenge was actually another K.A. Tucker book that was to read One Tiny Lie. That was the second book in her Ten Tiny Breasts Quartet, and I ultimately ended up DNFing that story. I will be going into way more details on my thoughts and feelings of these books and why I DNF'd One Tiny Lie in the wrap up that I'm going to be posting very soon. But I did ultimately satisfy all three of those challenges. Then in terms of actual gameplay, the first prompt I landed on was to read a TBR veteran. And for that, I selected The Raven King by Maggie Steve Otter. This was the fourth and final book in her Raven Voice cycle, and I needed to go ahead and finish it. It was on the list of books that I needed to complete in 2023. It also completes a series. So it checked off a lot of boxes and I did absolutely finish this in May. And then I landed on the prompt to read a book by one of my favorite authors. And for that, I chose to read Fly Away by Kristen Hanna. This again is the completion of a series. It's a completion of a duology. The first book being Firefly Lane. This was already on my radar to read in 2023 and I wanted to go ahead and get it done. So I did. Next, I landed on the prompt to read a book set in a foreign country. And for that, I actually used Chasing River by K.A. Tucker since that is set in Ireland. So that absolutely worked out well for that one. I also landed on the prompt to read a book that is set in or published in between the years 2000 and 2019. And for that, that I read Stay Awake by Megan Golden. I did complete this in May and I absolutely very much enjoyed this one. And then the final TBR game prompt that I landed on was to read an overhyped book. And for that, I selected The Martian by Andy Weir. Andy Weir was an author that I was determined to try in 2023. I had already had this on my shelf. This satisfies multiple other prompts for reading challenges and Slayer Fest. And so I was hyped 
to be able to go ahead and get into this in May and I definitely finished it. So once again I don't have to take any punishments for the month of June because I satisfied all of the challenges and the TBR game prompts so we're going into June completely fresh. So without further ado let's go ahead and pull some challenges for the month of June. All right so I have my little challenge bunk here and really the only caveat that I have is that I'm currently reading a big chunky fantasy so if I pull another big chunky fantasy I'm not going to do that I'm just going to put it right back in the cup. We got number one here. Okay let's see. The It Girl by Ruth Ware. I have actually already read that one, so I can get rid of this prompt. All right, another one here. The Raven King. Okay, as I just mentioned, I've already finished it, so we'll get rid of this one as well. All right, let's see about this one. Rachel Lynn Solomon. Okay, so she is on the list of authors that I want to try in 2023. And this is absolutely perfect because I already had plans to read the X Talk in June because it satisfies a Slayer Fest prompt of a hate to love relationship. I'm going to use that to satisfy the spike prompt. So turns out I'm not really adding anything to my TBR with this one because I'm already going to be reading the X Talk. This follows our main character Shay Goldstein. She has been a producer at her Seattle public radio station for nearly a decade and she can't imagine working anywhere else. But lately it's been a constant clash between her and her newest colleague Dominic Yun who's fresh off a journalism master's program and convinced he knows everything about public radio. When the struggling station needs a new concept, Shay proposes a show that her boss greenlights with excitement. On the X Talk, two exes will deliver relationship advice live on air. Their boss decides Shay and Dominic are the perfect co-hosts given how much they already despise each other. Neither loves the idea of lying to listeners but it's this or unemployment. Their audience gets invested fast and it's not long before the X Talk becomes a must listen in Seattle and climbs podcast charts. As the show gets bigger so does their deception, especially when Shay and Dominic start to fall for each other. In an industry that values truth, getting caught can mean the end of more than just their careers. So I'm actually really, really excited that this was the challenge that I pulled because it doesn't add anything onto my TBR and it actually kind of makes it mandatory that I have to read this. I was kind of going back and forth if I was really in the mood to read it, but I'm certainly going to go ahead and read it in June. So I'm very excited to be getting to this one. All right, well, so far this has been really kind to me, but we still have two more to go, y'all. So anything could happen. All right, let's do this one. Eddie Flynn. Okay, so that means I need to read the next book in Steve Kavanaugh's Eddie Flynn series. I've already read The Defense and The Plea, and so now I need to read book number three. So if you're not familiar with the Eddie Flynn series, Eddie Flynn is actually a defense attorney, and in the first couple of books, you are following him as he is in very high-pressure, high-stakes situations. All of these books are very, very fast-paced. They are completely bingeable, compulsively readable, page-turning books. They typically take place in a very short amount of time, so like in two days or less, and so they definitely keep you on the edge of your seat, and I also think that they are very cleverly written thrillers definitely well woven. Steve Kavanaugh is certainly a master of the art of the prosecution and the defense and I really enjoyed both of the stories that I've read. So this third book is called The Liar. It's going to be a quick fast read. It's not going to take much energy to get through so this one should be easy to fly through. All right and let's go ahead grab the third and final challenge. Grant County. Okay, so speaking of continuing a series, I have to read the next book in the Grant County series by Karen Slaughter. Y'all know Karen Slaughter is one of my favorite authors of all time. She is the queen of dark, gritty, gruesome thrillers. She is not afraid to put her characters through some stuff. The Grant County series is set in small Grant County in Georgia. It follows two main characters, Sarah, who is the medical examiner there, as well as the town pediatrician, and then her husband slash ex-husband, Jeffrey, who is the sheriff. And it's kind of following them as they are solving crimes together and also dealing with their own personal relationship issues. I can't remember off the top of my head if I have to finish book five or six. I know that there are six total in the Grant County series, but I can't remember which one I'm on off the top of my head, but I'm excited to go ahead and be making further progress in this series because now I really do enjoy it. It was hit or miss at the very beginning. I wasn't super impressed with it, but as the books have gone on, I've really, really enjoyed myself. All right, so I'm pretty happy with those challenge pulls, and now that those are out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the gameplay. All right, it's time for the next round of the My Bad TBR game. I am hoping that the board is very, very kind to me this month because I have a lot going on. So we are going to see. Let's go ahead and start with draw number one. All right, I got a five and yellow and I only have one yellow guy out on the board that I can actually move. So he is going to have to move forward five, one, two, three, four, five. Someone's TBR. So that basically means I have to find a book that is on someone's TBR for hopefully June or maybe like the summer and select one of their reads. All right, so my first draw was the number five and the color yellow and that landed me on the prompt to read someone else's TBR. So I'm actually going to save this for now. I don't have anything pre-selected for this because I have 
haven't really watched a lot of June TBRs. I don't even know if very many June TBRs have come out yet because when I'm filming this, it is only May 27th. So there is definitely still some time for June TBRs to come out. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of leeway with this and just kind of figure something out in June that I want to read. So this is a TBD kind of situation. All right, draw number two. Okay, so I drew a two, so I'm going to have to draw again. So I'm going to have to do seven draws this time instead of six. The good news is, is that if I draw a color other than red, I have the opportunity to get one more of my pawns out on the playing field. So let's see what we can do. Okay, perfect. So I'm actually going to use this opportunity to get this green pawn out of start. And since that goes onto a free space, I actually don't have to select a book for that. So I may have seven draws, but that doesn't mean I'm going to have seven books. So that works for me. Next, I drew the number two and green. And I decided to use this to get my final green pawn out of start and onto the playing field. And since every square immediately outside of start is a free space, I don't actually have to select anything for this. So no book was chosen, but because it was a two, I have to draw again. Draw number three. Okay, so I have a couple of options here. I can move one, two, three, four, five, and do a book with the five W's, who, what, when, where, and why. Or if I move that guy five, it looks like it's one, two, three, four, five, spring vibes. So let me think about what I want to do with this one. Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and do spring vibes. So let me turn the board and I'll move my guy. One, two, three, four, five. Draw number three was the number five in the color red, and that landed me on the prompt to read a book with spring vibes. And for this, I'm actually going to go ahead and read The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon. I just think that the cover with its pinks and stuff is very spring, very fresh. So I think this is going to work perfectly to satisfy the spring vibes. All right, draw number four. All right, so four is a backwards movement, so I have to move my yellow pawn backwards. Again, I only have one actively out on the board, so we're going to see what he gets. Let me turn the board. Okay, one, two, three, four. Book box. Okay, that couldn't have been more perfect because I have a ton of book box books that I need to be reading right now, so I am happy with that one. Then I drew the number four in the color yellow. I had to move backwards four, and I landed on the prompt to read a book box book. So that is a book that has been sent to me in one of the book subscription services that I am a part of. And I definitely had plenty that I could choose from, y'all, but I decided to go ahead and make the smart decision and use one that would also satisfy a Slayer Fest prompt. So for that, I'm going to be reading For Her Consideration by Amy Spalding. This is one of the books that I ended up getting while I was a subscriber to Aardvark, which I no longer am. I've kind of put a pause on that for right now just because I'm not crazy impressed with their selections. And even though I've enjoyed the couple of books that I've read so far that I've gotten from them, a lot of the times I'm not super looking forward to reading the books. And this is kind of the case with this. I have no doubt that this is going to be a sweet, heartwarming, sapphic romance, but yet I'm not overall convinced by the plot or the vibes. It says, since a crushing breakup three years ago, Nina Rice has written romance friends, her dreams of script writing for TV, and even LA proper out of her life. Instead, she's safely out in the suburbs in her aunt's condo, working her talent agency job from home, managing celebrity email accounts, and certain that's plenty of writing and plot for her life. But a surprise meeting called by Ari Fox, a young actress on everyone's radar, stirs up all kinds of feelings Nina thought she deleted for good. Ari is sexy, out, and proud, and a serious control freak, according to Nina's boss. She has her own ideas about how Nina should handle her emails and about getting to know her ghostwriter. When she tells Nina she should be writing again, Nina suddenly finds it less scary to revisit her abandoned life than seriously consider that Ari is flirting with her. Between reconnecting with her old crew and working on a new script, a relationship with the movie star seems like something she'll definitely mess up, but what could be more worth the risk? So like I said, I have no doubt that this is going to be like a sweet, cute, heartwarming, good time sapphic romance, and I'm certainly willing to give it a shot, otherwise I wouldn't have it on my TBR. So this is going to be the one that I use to satisfy the book box TBR prompt. All right, draw number five. All right, so typically 10, I can move forward 10 or backwards one, but if I move this guy backwards one, he will knock that green into start. And I don't really think I want to do that. So I'm going to just go ahead and take whatever this guy lands on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, continue a series. Well, that works out perfectly because I'm already planning on continuing a series in June. So we're going to go with that. Draw number five was the number 10 and the color blue. This landed me on the TBR prompt to continue a series. And this actually works out quite perfectly because for June, I already 
already had plans on reading House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J Mass. This is the second book in her Crescent City series. I am buddy reading this with Sarah from Sarah's Nightstand. I have actually already started this story and it's really easy to read. I'm so glad to be back in this world with these characters and it's like candy compared to The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson which I just finished. Like it is so easy to fly through. I think I'm already on page 150 and I've only been reading it for a couple of days but this is certainly the book that I'm going to go with to continue a series and I have every hope that I can finish this by the end of June. It is over 800 pages so we'll see but like I said it's been super easy to fly through so far. All right draw number six. All right, so this is wonderful because seven is one where I can split the moves between two pawns. And since I have that guy over there that needs to get into home base, I'm going to go ahead and move him two and then one of these other guys five. All right, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I can't do that because then he would have to slide. So one, two, three, four, five. So now we are on fall vibes. So we've got a spring and a fall going today. So that works. Next, I drew a number seven and the color green. And for sevens, I'm actually able to split that movement between two pawns. And that's exactly what I did for this because I had a pawn in the safety zone and it needed to get into its home base. And so I moved that two into its home base and it is permanently safe. It cannot go anywhere. It cannot be touched. And then I moved another green pawn five and it landed me on the prompt to read a book with ball vibes. And for that, I have a book I haven't even hauled yet. The Haunting of Ashburn House by Darcy Coates. So Darcy Coates is an author that is highly recommended in the Patreon for Sid Bookworm. I'm a Patreon over there and they're constantly recommending Darcy Coates. And when I came across this in Second and Charles when we were there a couple of weeks ago, I had to go ahead and pick it up. It is certainly giving me all of those fall spooky vibes. And since I wanted to go ahead and see what Darcy Coates could do with horror, I hear that she is fantastic. I absolutely thought that this was the perfect book to read for fall vibes. There's something wrong with Ashburn House. Everyone knows about Ashburn House. They whisper that its old owner went mad and restless ghosts still walk the halls. But when Adrian, desperate and in need of a place to stay, inherits the crumbling old mansion, she only sees it as a lifeline until darkness falls. Strange messages are etched into the walls. Furniture moves when she leaves the room, and a grave hidden in the depths of the forest hints at a terrible, unforgivable secret. Something twisted lives in her house, its hungry eyes ever watchful. Chasing the threads of a decades-old mystery, it isn't long before she realizes she's become prey to something deeply unnatural and intensely resentful. She has no idea how to escape. She has no idea how to survive. Only one thing is certain. Ashburn's dead are not at rest. I'm getting all the spooky fall vibes from this and I'm excited to see what it's all about. All right, time for the last draw. All right, so that was a nine. That's pretty straightforward. I only have the one guy that I can move. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, summer. Okay, so we are in a seasons theme. We've got spring, summer, and fall going this time. All right, y'all, I think that is going to do it for this round. Ultimately, not too bad overall. I'm pretty pleased with it. And then the very final draw was a number nine and the color blue. And then that landed me on the prompt to read a book with summer vibes. So I've got spring, summer, and fall so far going on for this TBR and kind of in the spirit of continuing with series, I've decided to go ahead and read Hook, Line, and Sinker by Tessa Bailey. This is another one that I have not yet hauled, so these are a little bit of spoilers for a haul that is coming up in June. But this is the second and final book in Tessa Bailey's The Bellinger Sister duology. The first book was It Happened When Summer, and this is the second book. I enjoyed It Happened When Summer enough that I wanted to go ahead and continue in the duology. This follows the sister of the main character from the very first book, so I'm excited to go ahead and continue this and complete a duology. All right, y'all, so those are all of the challenges and the TBR game prompts. I do have at least one other book on my radar to complete in June. I'm a patron of SAP over at Riveting Reads. This is the first time I'm able to participate in her book club. And for June, the patron has selected The Chateau by Jacqueline Goldis. This isn't getting the highest ratings. It doesn't necessarily sound like something that's super up my alley, but we're gonna see. Welcome to picturesque Provence, where the lady of the chateau, Seraphine, has opened its elegant doors to her granddaughter Darcy and three friends. 20 years earlier, the four girlfriends studied abroad together in France and visited the old woman on the weekends, creating the group's deep bond. But why this sudden invitation? Amid winery tour, market visits, and fancy dinners overlooking olive groves and lavender fields, it becomes clear that each woman has a hidden reason for accepting the invitation. Then, after a wild evening's celebration, Seraphine is found brutally murdered. As the women search for answers to this shocking crime, fingers begin pointing and a sinister Instagram account pops up, exposing snapshots from the friends' intimate moments at the chateau while threatening to reveal more. As they race to uncover who murdered Seraphine and is now stalking them, they learn the chateau houses many secrets, several worth killing for. All right, that sounds a little bit more interesting than I was originally expecting, so we're gonna go ahead and give it a try like I said, this is a book club pick that I'm going to try to get to, but I don't know how my reading is going to look in June, y'all. Honestly, between working seven days a week and then going on that one week vacation, it is just going to be 
nuts and chaos and I think I'm already overextending myself here a little bit. I'm gonna get to as many of these as I can. I might end up taking a couple punishments for July. I don't know. That is it everybody. That is my TBR for June. Please comment down below and let me know some of the books that are on your TBR for June. Or if you made it all the way to the end of this video, go ahead and leave me a cat emoji because June is actually adopt a cat month. Y'all know how I feel about cats. I love them to death and in honor of my new job at the Humane Society and my overall mission to get all of the cats and dogs at home, go ahead and leave me a cute little cat emoji down below or even a dog emoji. I'm fine with that as well. And as always y'all, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I now post one video a week, possibly two, depending on what I could do. And I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos. Bye guys. Thank you.